In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to route audio out of addictive drums so that you can actually play live uh, with a MIDI drum set or a keyboard and record straight to audio tracks. So this is a request on the forums from um, Russ UK. He uh, also runs the site reaper-blog.com. First thing we're going to do is go to insert virtual instrument on new track. And we're going to select addictive drums, press OK. And then it's going to ask us whether or not we want it to automatically build the routing out of addictive drums. And we're going to click on yes. And this is the demo version that I have right now. Uh, the first things we want to do is as soon as we do this, we're going to be able to hear it play. So that's great, but it's coming through the master channel and not all the other channels. What I recommend doing is muting the master channel on addictive drums and then actually deleting the master channel in Reaper that goes to, see so it says AD drums master, is deleting this because um, we're going to section it all out, so we're not going to need that track. So now what we're going to do is these little arrows where it says out underneath the kick, snare, hi-hat, and so on, we're going to click the down arrow on each of these, which means that they're going to be sent out to something, which is uh, what we have routed over there in Reaper already, because it's awesome and it does it for us. So after we do that, if we play the you know snare and kick, we'll see it come through corresponding uh, tracks. There's a little bit of signal coming through the snare. That's just the, the uh, snare bleed. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag a beat out from uh, Addictive Drums, which I'll just take the startup beat that it comes with, which is this. So I'm just going to take this and drag it out onto the main uh, section here. So now I can close out that. This is simulating me playing or a drummer playing. We get the same results we just, if you're recording. You just have to make sure you have your MIDI input to the correct uh, thing. I'll show you how to do that with a MIDI keyboard right now. If I open up the MIDI keyboard, which is also um, Alt-B, as well as I have this button here, or you can go into View uh, MIDI Keyboard. So if I, you know, press these buttons now, we can, uh, you can do it with the virtual keyboard, you can do it with the external keyboards to route the correct MIDI input inside. And now I can uh, play this here, which will simulate uh, like a full drummer playing. As you can see, it's all on the different tracks, even the uh, overheads and the room mic. So, okay. So now, how do we record this onto audio tracks, not and not just render it? Because we want to actually play live and just record the audio on. So now, what you want to do is click on this in button here. And we see it says record input. We want to change this to record output. And we want to change it to record output stereo. And now same for all of these down the line. Now if you didn't want to record the stereo output, you just want the mono, you can just do the same thing. Just, you know, record output, but just go to mono output. And there is this other option which says record stereo latency compensated. What that's gonna do, it's just gonna pre-nudge your audio track that's recorded if you have a plugin on it. Also, since we're recording the output, if we put effects on here, say we put, um, you know, re-EQ on here, and we do a low end cut on something or whatever, that sound is going to be recorded onto the audio track. So I'd highly recommend recording flat and not putting any effects on at all, and then afterwards doing it. Or if you say, you know what, I want to pre-EQ it before it goes on to tape, quote unquote, then what you're going to want to do is bypass this after you record it to tape, or else you'll be doubling your EQ job. So I'm going to actually take this off for now, remove selected. So the reason I say to use the stereo output and not the latency compensated, because if you have a big plugin on here that has a whole bunch of latency, 
it's gonna nudge it before, which I'll show you what that looks like. I'll go ahead and do a drum track here. I'll put the plug in, the same plug in on both. I'll use, um, does the reefer have high latency? I think it does. Let me see. Yeah, reefer's got big latency. So we got reefer on one of them, and then I'm just gonna duplicate this track here. So it's on both. And the only difference is gonna be that I'm gonna make this output latency compensated and we'll look and see what the difference is so now let's uh select all of our tracks here remember this is the trial so i only have kick snare hi-hat and cymbals but you know you get the point so let's uh let's record this take loop mode off this whole thing here and uh, when it's done I'll go ahead and stop it and I'll show you that the kicks will not be lining up and the one that has stereo out will be lining up with the MIDI track better. So I'm almost done with this here. Okay so let's click on uh, one of these beats here. So as you can see this one right here is the stereo out not compensated and this one here is the stereo out with compensation. So I'm not sure why it does this, but you can see that this line right here is the kick and the non-compensated one is pretty much perfect on there. Um, you know, that's probably all the samples sound difference, not the actual latency difference. And then um, this other one is nudged to the left probably about 4,096 samples, which is what its latency is. So it's gonna sound, you know, early if you record it that way. So now it's recorded onto the track affected. So if we leave these on, it's gonna double our effect sound. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is actually take those off. So let's delete this track here. And I'll show you another difference. You say, oh, well, you know, why would I do this instead of render? I don't know why you do this unless you're gonna play live and you wanna record the audio tracks live. Um, so the difference in that would be if we duplicate this and we get rid of this audio track and we render to stereo stem by right clicking on it and go into render track to stems and mute original. It's going to go through and do it. Now these, if you look at them, are pretty much exactly the same because you can see that this was rendered with that effect on it and so was this because it was recorded through it and it recorded the output after the effect. So as you can see they're exactly the same or if not exactly extremely similar to being you know the same. So we get rid of that and get rid of that. So now you can see we got our audio tracks recorded we can mute this now and we can uh, play it. Now, if you want to record enable this, but you don't want to actually record MIDI, which I'm not sure why you wouldn't want to do that, uh, but this, here's how you do it. You right click on the record button and go down to uh, record disable. So it's input monitoring only and that's it. So now you can um, actually get a virtual keyboard out and we can actually record and um, it'll record right through it. So you can definitely hear uh, some kind of weird latency because the reefer is on here, or at least it feels like it. You know that or I'm just not that great at playing drums on a keyboard. <laughs> anyway, a uh, quick little recap on that is after you let Reaper automatically route them for you, you're going to go into your addictive drums. You're going to make sure that these outs are all pressed in. Uh, you can mute the master because we're not going to use it. You can even delete the master track up here that it can't, comes with because you're not going to use it. And then you're going to make sure you go to every single channel in this out button here. You're going to click on that and go to record output and select record output stereo for all the tracks. That will allow you to actually play and record the audio going into this via MIDI. So that's it.
I'm Johnny from Red Sticker Records. Thanks for watching tutorialsforreaper.com.